Hi everyone, Billy here at Gilbert Travels, welcoming you to the second video here in my studio. Today we're going to wrap up my last video to publish here in 2020. We're going to do a general wrap up of the year and we're going to go through some of my favorite moments for the channel so far. So let's talk some more about it. First off, I want to thank you all for coming along with me on the ride here in 2020. You helped boost my subscribers from less than 500 to over 900 now and in spinning distance from 1000. So I really appreciate that and I hope you enjoyed seeing all the trip reports that I was able to put out this year. Did have a good back catalog from 2019 I was able to go through and we did get to do some travel early on in the COVID pandemic back in May and as well some uh, many trips here later in the year that uh, some of which are still yet to come to the channel here in January. I'm not quite sure at this point yet when things will be a little more back to normal in 2021 to resume some new travel and have some fresh things to show you, but I look forward to it and I hope you enjoy and look forward to coming along as well. So again, give me some feedback on this new format. Let me know if you like this and would like to see some more videos of me uh, just telling you some more about myself and about flight and here in the studio, as well as start leaving me some questions. If I get a good set of questions together, I'll be happy to do a Q&A video for you as well. In this crazy year, we also blew right by the second anniversary of the channel. So since we didn't do a whole lot of original flying this year, I'm going to go back and do a best of series of my favorite moments in the channel thus far in the two and a half years that we've been out here putting content up for you. All right, so let's go through it and we will start with one of my favorite categories, my best five airline meals to date. So taking up the number five slot, this one may be a bit of a surprise to you. But I'm going to give that one to Hop by Air France. In one of my early reviews on this channel, I flew with them on a short flight, a hop if you will, from Stuttgart over to Paris in their E-170 in business class. And uh, there was an unplanned flight as a result of another cancellation and needing to reposition to Paris at the last minute. I had no expectations of Hop. I had no idea what they would be serving at all on such a short flight. And I was really impressed for a less than hour in the air flight, I believe it was, that we got a really nice meal. And uh, as you could expect from French cuisine, it was very simple, uh, very well prepared. And uh, I still enjoy that meal. And I was impressed that we even got a paper menu on such a short flight. Next up, we have SAS Scandinavian on my flight from Miami to Oslo. I think SAS is really kind of an under-known business class carrier. I think they have a nice product on their long haul fleet and food wise, they do have an in-air chef with a uh, galley cart and everything coming through the cabin. So I really enjoyed my experience with SAS and I do recommend giving them a shot if you ever get a chance. And then next up, we're going to put our only U.S. carrier on this list and that's going to be JetBlue Mint. I've flown that service a couple times now for the channel and any chance to get a meal on JetBlue Mint is definitely going to be a memorable one. Do like their tapas concept of getting three out of five small plate dishes and their new service that they're going to be firing up here for 2021 that's already out there on some routes is looks to be even more excellent. So can't wait to try that out for you. Next in the second place position, we're going to have to go with Turkish Airlines. I don't think this is going to be a surprise for anyone. They are known for their excellent cuisine and I've had a chance to chime out on two flights so far and really what even impressed me was their regional service on my flight from Austria to Istanbul just a couple hours. We received a true multi-course service including their famous mezzi plate and a main and dessert. Really uh, awesome service from Turkish. Definitely uh, look forward to trying them again in the future but right now they're only offering boxed meals but uh, when they go back to full service again, I definitely would like to give them a shot. So that's going to bring us to our number one, my favorite meal to date on the channel. And I'm going to give that to Cathay Pacific First Class. was so glad to get a chance to fly their Fifth Freedom route from New York's JFK over to Vancouver on a quick five-hour cross-country journey before that route ended. Uh, so that was really awesome to get to fly such an awesome uh, long-haul first-class product on a short flight. And they really still put their best foot forward with an excellent multi-course meal and a super great experience with Cathay Pacific. Would love to try them on a true long-haul flight. 
All right, so let's move now into my favorite seat products that I've flown today. And we're going to start out with kind of an honorable mention, fifth place, my favorite economy seat. Uh, we're going to go up by class from there. And my favorite economy seat, I'm going to give to the Embraer E-Jet, whether it's the 170, 175, or 190. That 2x2 two two configuration is very comfortable, very spacious. I like that seat a lot and like to get a chance to fly on the Embraer whenever I can. So then we're going to go to my favorite U.S. domestic first class seat. And I'm going to give that to American Airlines on their A321 legacy first class product that's also on some 737s for the moment and some A319s. But this is their product with the in-seat entertainment and it is quickly going away. I think by early 2023, it's going to be completely out of the fleet. But uh, while you can find it, I think it's a great seat. I really enjoy it and hope you get a chance to try it too. Now we're going to move to my favorite premium economy long haul seat. And this one I'm going to give to Norwegian Airlines. Uh, all in all, to date, I've flown on I think about a half a dozen different premium economies, uh, including some flights I took before this channel. And Norwegians really took the cake for me in terms of comfort. Really has excellent recline, a great leg rest. It's a very comfortable seat. I slept well in it. So uh, take a look at that review as well if you want to see a good example of what a uh, premium economy product can be. So now we're going to move into business class. As I said in my review last week of the wrap up of the Transcon Challenge, my new favorite business class product is United Polaris. I think that's a great staggered configuration seat and I look forward to trying it out sometime soon in a long haul service. But those uh, odd number window seats are really excellent and I highly suggest you give them a shot. And then that's going to move us on to first class. Been in four first class seats here to date for the channel. And my number one is going to go to Cathay Pacific. That is not the most modern or flashy seat out there. It's not fully enclosed or anything like that. But it's still a great experience. Very wide, very spacious. Just six seats there in the front of the 777. And it's an awesome seat to be in. And once again, I have to recommend if you get a chance to fly with Cathay Pacific, give them a shot. All right, so now we're going to move on to my favorite airports to fly into, out of, or through on the channel to date. And bringing up the number five slot, I'm going to give it to where I am right now, about a few miles from SeaTac in Seattle, Washington. It's my new home airport, and so far I really enjoy it. Uh, right now it's pretty limited what you can spot there, but during a normal times you've got flights from Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and all around America. It's a really cool airport to fly through and you can go to a lot of places from here. And then uh, that's gonna bring us to number four, which is gonna be my old home airport for most of my life and that's Miami International. I really enjoy Miami. They have a couple of really nice concourses, including the American concourse as well as the concourse that uh, Delta flies out of. They're both very nice. A lot of restaurants and shops, some good lounges. So I still uh, like to fly through Miami whenever possible and look forward to continuing to fly through Miami. That's going to bring us to number three and I'm going to give that to New York's John F. Kennedy. Flown through that airport quite a few times and uh, compared to say LA or San Francisco or Denver, I really like New York JFK. So now we're going to head abroad and this one might be a little controversial but I'm going to give the next number two slot to London Heathrow. I don't know what it is about London but I've always enjoyed flying through Heathrow. And uh, that definitely is going to still take my number two slot to date. And that's going to bring us to the number one in this category. And that's an airport I got to see for a few minutes. Didn't see nearly enough of, but I'm itching to get a chance to go back to. And that was Oslo's Gardermoen Airport in Norway. That was a beautiful airport. Super amazing. Again, I only had about uh, 45 minutes to run through there on the way to a connection. But uh, not been in an airport before that really made me want to go back just to fly through again. So while we're in the airport, let's talk about my favorite lounges experience to date. And we're going to start in Miami with the Centurion Lounge. I'm proud to be an MX card holder and I really enjoy their Centurion Lounges available to their Platinum card holders. And the one in Miami I've spent a lot of time in and really look forward to any chance to be in that space. It's got good food, good drinks, nice views out of the airport. And I can and have spent many an hour staring out those windows, sipping a nice cocktail, and highly recommend the MX Lounge in Miami. Now we're going to move over to London Heathrow. I've got two lounges on this list, 
Line number four, I'm gonna to give to the Qantas Business Class Lounge. That is a phenomenal space with a beautiful bar, whether you're there in the morning for coffee or in the evening or afternoon for cocktails. Definitely getting a chance to go to the Qantas Lounge in London is worth it. And that's gonna bring us to our number three, also in London Heathrow, and that's the Cathay Pacific Lounge, which has both a business and a first class segment. And I think even if you can only get into the business class with their noodle bar and their shower facility, super worth it. Awesome lounge to visit and definitely ranks as the number three in my top lounges to date. Number two, I'm going to give to Turkish Airlines and their new business class lounge in Istanbul. That is just a phenomenal experience. Over the top, absolutely almost ridiculous how many things you can do, how much food you can eat, how much time you could spend in that lounge and really enjoy yourself. And so they're going to earn number two on my list. Number one in this category, I'm going to give to American Airlines Flagship First Dining at New York's JFK. Their table service concept there is so small scale, so elegant, so well produced. It's really a phenomenal experience and I really enjoyed it uh, and I hope they get those lounges back open again soon and that I get another chance to visit Flagship First Dining by American Airlines. All right, so now for a little bit of a fun category. I'm going to rank from lowest to highest the four U.S. domestic fruit and cheese plates that I have had in the air here while having the channel. The only thing uh, I haven't tried is United's, so that one's not going to be on this list, but I've done the other four. And in fourth place, I'm going to give that to JetBlue. They technically offer a fresh fruit and cheese plate on some of their longer flights. Uh, I had their fruit and cheese uh, snack platter that's available on both basically all of their flights and considering that it costs pretty comparable to the other fruit and cheese plates we're going to go through it's not a good showing and i would just stick with the free snacks on JetBlue over that particular paid item next on the list we're going to give to delta airlines again here you do at least move into real fresh fruit cheese and crackers but uh, it wasn't the most memorable on the list so we're going to move right along to american airlines they really have a solid fruit and cheese plate, some nice fresh varieties of cheese, plenty of crackers to actually consume it all with, and some nice fresh grapes to enjoy. Really do like the fruit and cheese plate with American. Had it several times now that it's basically the meal offering in first class as well. So do like that one a lot. Number one, and they're famous for it, we're going to give it to Alaska Airlines with their signature fruit and cheese plate, which if you actually look, if I had planned ahead, I'd have gotten this out but I've got a package for it right here in my showcase because they're now selling it outside of the airport at a local restaurant here in the Seattle area, but I've had it in the air. I've had it on the ground. It's a great variety of cheeses and it's an awesome product to get to have in economy on Alaska Airlines. So do give it a shot sometime. Okay, so I thought this would be fun. Just gonna go through a few video categories on my channel and talk about the videos and why I think they're important or not important. So my most viewed video to date is my American Airlines premium economy trip from Paris down to Miami. At the time of filming this, it's got about 52,000 views, which makes it by far and away my most viewed video. And it's been uh, good, solid views since the day it came out through to today. People really apparently enjoyed finding out about American Airlines premium economy. I know I did. I've been a long time enjoyer of premium economy, and I still think it represents a good value for leisure travelers, travelers in particular. And I was excited to get up in the air shortly after American launched that service and really before Delta or United was doing a full premium economy service to bring you along on American's premium economy product. Going the other way, my least viewed video yet to date at the moment is my moving special video where I stopped in the Badlands in South Dakota and some other parks through South Dakota. Uh, unfortunately, I thought it'd be a little fun to bring you along on my cross-country journey from Florida to Washington this summer. And uh, apparently you've told me that you wanted me to stick to airplanes because basically nobody's watched that video uh, series. And the first one is a little bit dull because it's just driving about a thousand miles. But uh, the other two videos where I stopped at the National Parks really got some beautiful footage. So if you do get a chance, you should watch those videos. I think they are a lot of fun. I'll probably re-edit just the footage from the national parks and put an upload up this summer when more people are thinking about going because uh, some of the footage I got there I really thought was nice. 
All right, so now let's move into a couple of wild cards, and that is the video I was most surprised did not do well because YouTube, you just never know. It's kind of a total crapshoot. You put out videos that you think are going to be great, and nobody watches them, and sometimes videos you don't expect to do too well do really well. So in my case, the video that I put out that I just think has never performed well, and I was really surprised by that, is my aforementioned Cafe Pacific first class flight on that now discontinued Fifth Freedom route from New York's JFK over to Vancouver in Canada. I think that was a really unique flight. I was uh, very excited to fly it and got a chance to get on it before it was going to be canceled. And uh, I think it's a phenomenal review, so do give it a chance if you do. But uh, so far, only about 800 people have seen it. So I uh, was really surprised for a true international first class style service that nobody was that interested in that video. And swinging the other way, the video that has done the best that I was the most surprised by is my review of American Airlines Eagle 145 service uh, from Pitt Greenville in North Carolina to Charlotte. This short hop video is my number 10 most viewed video of all time so far, which is kind of really surprising to me with over 5,000 views for just such a simple short hop in such a plain Jane little regional plane. It's really a video that has and continues to do well relatively speaking for me anyway, since it's come out. So that is the most surprising video to date that's done better than my expectations for it. So anyway, I hope that was a little spot of fun for you. Brightened up here at the end of your year. We'll have a new year coming here soon. Put 2020 behind us for better or worse and move on to the great, new, exciting world of 2021. I know we're all looking forward to things getting back to a little more normal. And there's gonna be so many things in travel and in other ways that we're not going to take for granted again after this year. So let's all take that away from this year of 2020 and move on into what is yet to come. Thank you for coming along with me so far here with Gilbert Travels. Please, if you haven't already, do subscribe and hit that notification bell. Like this video if you did enjoy today's content and leave me a comment. And again, leave me some questions. We'll start putting together some content towards a Q&A video. Thank you for watching so much and we will see you on the next flight.